fourth and fifth. The positions that from here straddle the line between success and failure. And this direct confrontation between the current occupants could well provide an outline of the ultimate picture. Newcastle have had a problem getting out of the traps recently. They could have been one down inside 30 seconds against both West Ham and Villa, who both hit the post with a near immediate attack. Spurs hoping to be able to get the ball forward early on to exploit any slow start from the Geordies today. Yeah, Sarge just got a touch on that when Isaac tried to take it past him. He's playing as the, the deepest line player in midfield. Just losing out there with a heavy touch. Dean Reich working it wide for Joe Linton. He's got Willock outside it. Joe Linton getting himself into a shooting position, almost a perfect start, it is! It's taken Newcastle a minute, Jacob Murphy! And in this electric atmosphere, our Tottenham going to be running out of gas. I've got a question too, and it's why didn't somebody confront Joe Linton earlier? He was just allowed to work his way in and, and create the opportunity to get a, a shot away. And it was just too easy for Joe Linton. And we were talking before the game about the fact that Jacob Murphy had only one Premier League goal. Well, he's, he's managed to double it, but he should have been confronted. This is way too easy. It's terrible defending. Romero doesn't get there. Hoybier just backs off and he allows Joe Linton to to get that shot away, which should never have happened. And even though he does deflect it outside the post, Lloris, it's very alert follow-up from Murphy to finish, and finish in style. 61 seconds, all it's taken for Tottenham's remodelled defence to be breached. And perhaps an illustration there as well, Ivan Perisic, a player with so much experience, very little of it, as a left-back in the back four and just didn't have the awareness at the far post of who was where and the fact that Murphy might be coming in behind him. Well, there's that, but you could equally talk about Toro on the right side and he should have been the first to get to Joe Linton. What a start for Newcastle, an early settler for them. They've got 1-0 down in six of their last nine league games, but they had the early advantage today. Joe Linton playing a major part in that. If Spurs lose this, Newcastle will only need 13 points from their final seven games to finish above them. Manchester United would need 13 from eight. And that just shows the starkness of the situation from a Tottenham perspective, if they're to be beaten here. Well, it would seem that Eddie Howe got his message across in not making the changes we, we felt might happen today, but it's as if to say, you weren't yourselves at Villa, sort it. Isaac dropping deep, and well, they're on the front foot again, Isaac trying to tiptoe his way through. Very dire and out of play for a corner. Spurs just haven't got going at all. Well, Romero again is guilty of, of just basically standing and watching the, the move come further forward. Look, it's just ghosted past him. It's too easy for Isaac again. First corner of the game. Newcastle contact not quite as effective as they'd hoped. Back from Bruno Guimaraes. Already some dissenting voices from the Spurs fans. So playing the ball for rescued on the Newcastle uh, right hand side by uh, Dan Burke, spanning himself on the wrong side of the pitch, if you like, for a moment. Newcastle left back. Chipped in by Trippier. He's burned against him on his way back to his customary station. 
Still getting involved in every facet of the play. Shell. Oh, Joe Linton's made an excellent run for Romero's letting go. Joe Linton, he's in again. Six minutes of magpie magnificence. An abject Tottenham defending. Yeah. Well, again, you've got to look at the right side of the Tottenham defence because Toro doesn't see the run to begin with and he's got his arm in the air in the hope of getting offside. And Romero, again, just remains neutral. I don't know what Romero's doing. He should be taking command there and go and deal with it, go and head it. But instead, and I must admit, the ball over the top is delicious. The control from Joe Linton is equally delicious. And knowing that Loris was on his way out, that's really coolly taken. But shocking, shocking defending from the visitors. That's, we've got basically two guys that have been functioning as wing backs and they don't seem to be able to cope as full backs. And, and I'm being harsh on Perisic saying that because. You know, it's been less on his side. Just over four minutes between the two Newcastle United goals. Two up in five and a half minutes. In the biggest game of their league campaign so far. Stuff that Geordie dreams are made of. Having said that, Jim, I'm not giving up on Tottenham just yet because I know it's a bad situation for them at the moment. They have the, they have the capacity to turn it round. Pedro Porro nicking it away from Dan Byrne, but Guimaraes can capitalise on that and get Kieran Trippier forward again. Just a behind Longstaff. Skip the beneficiary of that, a rare touch for Harry Kane in these early stages as he... Plays it in for Kulisevsky. I was speaking to a former Spurs player before the game, Jim, and he said that the, the switch to a back four, he felt, was absolutely the correct thing to do. But he wouldn't have picked this as a back four because he felt that the two full-backs were too attacking, that there was no defensive balance with them in the team. He didn't have the defensive wherewithal to carry it off. He's been proved right. Oh! Has he been proved right? It's three! It's an absolute stunner from Murphy. Eight and a half minutes in. Newcastle United three, Tottenham nil. They waited 20 years for a return to the Champions League. Now they really believe. And you feel that that's an eight and a half minute spell that ends Tottenham's hopes. Well, we've seen desire, determination, fantastic drive and aggression. And I think Tottenham again have embarrassed themselves. It's given away sloppily, it's not a foul. And the fact again that Murphy isn't confronted and closed down, I think catches Lloris by surprise. I think the fact that he hits it so early. And to be honest, even if Lloris does dive, he's probably not getting to that because that's super accurate. It's brilliantly hit, and Newcastle are absolutely flying. Three goals in seven minutes and nine seconds for Newcastle. And Murphy has trebled his goal return for the season inside the first eight and a half minutes today. He's offside here. He'll be forgiven that by the Geordie supporters, but Stellini and Ryan Mason thought they had problems before the game started. 
Well, we touched on this in the build-up to the game, and I'm, I'm convinced that when, when you lose somebody with the authority that Conte had, and Conte would put fear in players, can Stellini? It, it, it doesn't seem so. Son will try and get in here. Close examination of Nick Pope. The quick hands on the edge of the penalty area. Well, ten minutes that they won't forget in these parts for a long time. And that's the ramifications of it. Newcastle back up to third with a much better goal difference than Manchester United, who do have a game in hand on them, but it's the six-point gap between Newcastle and Spurs that is absolutely key. Much risky there from Saar. Yeah, I think the Newcastle support thought there was a little more on that than there was from Saar, but it was decently weighted. Well, what a response, Jim. 3 0 defeat last week at Aston Villa. 3 0 up so early today. Well, I guess Eddie Howe so far looks spot on that he didn't have a snap reaction to what happened at Villa Park and that he, he's trusted that core group all season, and here they go again. It's Trippier. Di Marais getting it in, just a little bit too much on that. for the Tottenham fans, even at 1-0 down so early on, they were shouting for the removal of Daniel Levy. It's a long trip up to the northeast to witness what they've seen so far. Started the game three points adrift in the top four. In the beginning of this decisive week, remember, they take on Manchester United on Thursday, Liverpool next Sunday. Could have hit form this week, the whole complexion could change in their favour pretty rapidly, but in a couple of defeats and the prospects are bleak, here's Kane, that's only narrowly wide. Pope was beaten, but the post was beaten by about a foot. Well, it's the best we've seen from Tottenham. I mean, they, they haven't really ventured into a visiting territory until now and you know Skip has done well to actually find Harry Kane and I, I fully expected that to nestle in the back of the net but he hasn't had many touches Harry Kane so maybe he needed a sighter but there aren't too many stadia where Harry Kane has a bad record but even by his standards his return here at St James's has been exceptional he scored five goals in his last three matches on Tyneside Just there. Uh, and the race is in the desert of a bad afternoon for Spurs so far. It's Kane. Four for Cher. Murphy pressurised by Dyer. He's uh, fouled him, and there's uh, no advantage as Kieran Trippier went to ground as well. I think the ref might have given that for the foul on Murphy in the first place. Well, we're only 14 minutes in, but the, uh, the raw data suggests that this is all but done already. Spurs given a 1 in 50 chance of being able to turn this around. I think the more cynical of the uh, travelling supporters up high at that end of the ground would suggest their probability isn't even as high as that. And they've got such a good record here as well. 
Newcastle haven't beaten Spurs here since they won promotion back into the Premier League. Spurs winning four of their five visits, but it's going to be some story and a stunning turnaround if they can extend that run in their favour today. I, I honestly thought that it might be difficult for Newcastle to break a stubborn Tottenham down. I thought, get the numbers behind the ball, sit deep and, and make it hard for Newcastle, but anything but. And I like the way Newcastle have mixed their game up. Going forward again with Murphy, who's on a hat-trick. Guimaraes, Trippier, deflection, corner. Eric Dyer is certainly the voice in that side. I mean, lots of experience, but it looks like little leadership. But Dyer is trying to do his best. And away swinging corner. He tried to guide it back down. He's still in there. Son hoping to be able to bring it away. That's a really good recovery. Dutchman did well on the retreat there for Newcastle. It's Son again. The player who's got a good record here on Tyneside with the goals in two of his last three visits. Hoybier. Pedro Porro. Intelligent ball through the midfield for Skip. Guimaraes doing well to quickly get back goal side. Kulisevsky. Saar. Baptism of fire for him in the heart of the midfield. Yeah, but, you know, the, the one thing about Saar is that he looks as if he wants to get on the ball when there are one or two others that look as if they're trying to shy away from it. Hoybier now operating as kind of almost a left centre back in, in a in a back three it looks like with Dyer and Romero. Yeah, it looks like he's missed that Hoybier and it looks like a kind of a hybrid position of positions he's taking up. Would you imagine that's something the players have sorted that, uh, out themselves, or is that instruction from Stellini? I, I would guess. I mean, Stellini was out after each goal was scored and trying to kind of restructure things, so I suspect it was Stellini. It's a good ball to find uh, Kulisevsky. Burns sliding in to win it back, Gimaraes poking it forward, Willock. And he might have got Isaac in here, he has! In a game of this magnitude, how will their season possibly recover from this? Well, the ball over the top for Joe Linton's goal was absolute class. But Joe Willock on this one, it's, it's sumptuous. The Tottenham fans can't believe what they're watching. They've got what looks like to be a, a very static defence, but just watch this for Willock. A little look outside of the right foot, have some of that. That's absolutely glorious. And now it's a case of, can you get the finish in? Well, in this kind of confident environment, yes, any of them seem to can, and Isak has got into a wonderful position to thread that into the corner. And Tottenham are embarrassing themselves. Six goals in his last seven games. Six displacing Callum Wilson at the end. The head of the line really has provided Newcastle with full momentum in every conceivable sense. Newcastle 
Newcastle four. Tottenham now. And a pushing forward again. Oh, they've done it again. It's Isaac. An instant double strike. Two in two minutes for the Swede. Tottenham fans already heading for the train home. Twenty minutes of abject humiliation. Tottenham are now in the territory of disgrace. This is disgraceful defending. <laughs> 